Hello, my name is Brittany Shaver Flair, and I am a grade nine student at Vincent J. Maloney School. Today I have with me Mr. Philip Sturgis. He arrived in Canada on May 12, 1949, and he was 20 years old. He has lived with his family in St. Albert since 1967. His mother's sister was living on a farm near Paradise Valley and acted as his sponsor. In October of 1956, he married Patricia Margaret Spaulding. Hello, and thank you for coming today. Pleased to meet you. You grew up during the Second World War in Britain. Tell me about those years. Well, I was 11 when the war started in uh, September the 3rd, 1939. We lived not too far away from a fighter station, and that was where the bombing first started over there. The rest of the time, we moved around quite a bit. I was a, Myself and my brother were evacuated to uh, the center of Great Britain, that's Cannock Chase, it was a country village. Um, and by, uh, shortly after we'd been there about three months, my father came and got us, and my mother had suggested that perhaps if we were gonna die, we might as well die as a family. So uh, we moved around quite a bit, and we really didn't much, didn't happen to us. We were very fortunate and lucky. We did have one night where the whole area was inundated with uh, incendiary bombs, which meant they go on fire when they um, hit the ground. Uh, I remember looking out the window of the bedroom and it looked like a big birthday cake outside. There was a school behind us. And, but we had to get very busy and put out the fires that were already burning in our house, so the place where we lived, which we were able to do very quickly. Uh, there was also rationing, lots of uh, uh, things like that, we identical cards, we had to learn how to wear uh, gas masks, we had to carry them with at all times. Uh, if we were caught without them, we were fined. It was very strict. Uh, the security was very tight. Most nights there was air raids, so the sirens would go as soon as it, after it got dark, and the bombing and the shooting would go on all night, actually, though we weren't directly affected as much. We certainly could keep us so week at times. Let's talk about your school days. Did you go to a boys school or a co-educational school? Uh, primary was mixed, girls and boys. Um, I believe I got my first crush on a girl back in those days. Uh, from there I went to boys only for and then with the evacuation the middle of Eng to the Midlands of England. Uh, again it was mixed and then I ended up my last three years at an all boys school. We would do a, a whatever class that was going at the time. Most of our teachers were male, and I'm talking about the, these uh, secondary school now. Um, and uh, we would have uh, math, English, um, some uh, language, in, depending on the school we were at at the time. Um, um, we did some woodworking, did metal work. We were taught all those sort of things. We were supposed to be useful citizens when we finished school. I should add, by the way, that you don't finish, we didn't finish school like you people do now, at 18. I was 14 when I finished school and started work. Did you wear a school uniform? Basically, the, there was a sort of a dress code. Usually for uh, boys, it was uh, short pants, stopped above the knee, and socks that came up to your knee, um, uh, usually a blazer and uh, mostly in grey flannel and, and I actually wore, had a shirt and a tie that was, and we were expected to show up in that kind of condition. What did you do when you came home from school? Well, I had a pet tortoise, we also had a pet dog, um, I work in the garden, um, the uh, five o'clock there was a new uh, uh, children's broadcast on the BBC, uh, usually uh, for an hour. It was usually very interesting, very entertaining. Did historical stuff like um, the castles of England, how they were built, uh, and sometimes there was just another one called uh, about uh, make believe stuff, a toy town where the animals could speak and stuff like that. Did your school have activities? such as sports or clubs? Not really, no. Uh, the secondary school, we were given a, an a area of garden out of the school that we were supposed to look after and grow vegetables in. 
but uh, that was we're done after school. But we're basically, uh, uh, when we finished uh, school, we were finished. Occasionally, we were asked to do what we called a competition. I think you'd call it writing an essay today, but same sort of thing. And, uh, and there was a deadline, of course, as usual, when it had to be in. When you were a teenager, what did you do for fun? Go to movies. During the war, a lot of the time we went ice skating. There was an ice skating ring at another community not too far away. We used to um, uh, uh, be a big crowd of us that would meet on Sunday afternoons at Alliance Corner House. It was a cafe and uh, both boys and girls, uh, we never paired up as singles. We just went as a group. We used to have Saturday night poker sessions and we would go to each different house at a different week at, uh, and start out and the parents would go to bed and we'd play all night mm -hmm. and usually we'd end up by uh, hearing them wake up in the morning, get up and then we all made out that we'd been sleeping on the floor all night. Um, actually I remember one time the crowd had come down to our place, come to our place and to get back out we had to go past my mother's bedroom and I'm shushing all the fellows to keep quiet and she told me the next day she was laying in bed laughing because we were such a noisy bunch. Are some things the same? No, I think they're quite different actually. Uh, the, uh, uh, we were uh, maybe a little more regimented uh, and um, the, uh, uh, we didn't quite have the same um, options and things to do uh, that we that they have today. But so yeah, it was a little more Serious, you grew up faster, I think. And I always, I've always felt that the, the war, the way it went, and the separation of my parents who had to be away from each other for longer periods of time, um, that um, that probably had something to do with the fact that they did a divorce eventually. The, this sort of thing happened. So I've always, always classified it as a... Um, um, a, a walk, one of the accidents of war, shall we say. Why do you think that it's important that young and old spend quality time together? Well, I, I think we can both learn different things from each other, you know. But the point is you're enjoying some time together and uh, different things come up. You have lots of things you can laugh about. When I'm playing a game, I'm really all concerned about the game. The game's everything. And I mean that from the point of view, it really doesn't matter who wins. But it, it's really a form of contact because you, you need to spend, interact to each other. I think you need a lot of, uh, of time like that. Um, and also, uh, it, it, it does establish memories and things that happened uh, on some of, like we have an annual, several times a year we have family get together. They're noisy, they're loud, uh, but they're full of laughter and fun. And I think these are the things as you get older that will come back to you. I can remember many Christmases being with older people and, uh, and other young people as well, where we share the time together. And those things come back more and more as the older I get. There's something that's worth thinking about. I would like to thank you for being here today. We thank you for taking the trouble to do this.